Hello everyone and welcome to the 34th Objective-C tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be continuing off where we left off in lesson 33 with our introduction to blocks and of course in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how we can continue on with that but I'm going to show you how you can add parameters now to your blocks. So just as a quick recap to the previous tutorial I showed you how you could define your own blocks and assign those blocks to some block variable and then call that later on in your program. So that's pretty much all we covered and there's more to cover even beyond this tutorial. Uh, there's quite a bit more to cover but uh, for this all I'm going to be showing you is how you can add parameters to your blocks because previously we could only work with what we had declared in the block and the block never really changed. But of course when you have parameters you can now change some of the values that are in the block as well. So anyway, with that, uh, let's just get started. So in the previous tutorial, we had a simple block that looked like this. So we had my block, and it had no parameters. And we just assigned it some block that returned just a value, and we used 6 in the previous tutorial. So that's basically what we used in the block last tutorial. But of course, this block really is quite useless. All it's going to do is return the value of 6. And it might have some use when you pass it in with some other method, but as it stands, it's not all that useful. So sometimes you want to be able to incorporate other values when you call a block. And that's where parameters come in. You can pass in different values when you call the blocks at different times, and that allows you to change some of the values that are actually in the block. So instead of just returning 6, you could be, you know, adding two numbers together, which is what we're actually going to be doing in this tutorial. So anyway, with that, uh, let's go ahead and get started with this one. So in this tutorial, I kind of already gave it away, but we're going to be making a block that just adds two numbers together. And those two numbers are going to be in parameters, and we're just adding whatever is passed in. So, uh, same way we started last time, we're going to be returning some int because we're just adding two ints together. So we're going to say int is our return type, the name of our block is just going to be add, and now instead of having void like we had last time, we need to figure out how we're going to have multiple parameters. So for this, we're adding two different values that we pass in, so all we want to have is an int and then another int. So all that represents is that we have two ints that we're going to pass in parameters. So quite simple. Now, when you go to create the block, you have to have some kind of name for each of these uh, parameters. You can't just say, oh, I have two ints, because then you'd never know which int you're talking about. So you obviously have to have some name that you associate with the parameters that you pass in. So for this, we redeclare the parameters that we have. So we'd say int and now we say num1, and then we could say int num2. And of course, it doesn't matter what you call them, but you're just you're now saying that, well, the variables that we use in this block are going to be num1 and num2, and those are those ints that we're passing in. Simple enough. So now we create the open and close bracket like so, and all we have to do is return their added values. So num1 plus num2, and now we're returning whatever their int value is combined. So instead of how we had it last row, we don't really know what the outcome of this block is going to be because depending on what we pass in, the return value is going to be different. So instead of just returning 6 every time or 12 or whatever we had, it's going to be returning whatever we pass in, which is obviously a little different than we had in the previous tutorial. So nslog and we're just going to print out some value and of course our add block returns an int so we have percent %d and now in our add block we unlike last time we have to add the two parameters that we're going to have or we're going to add together so we'll say well we want to add 5 and 2 and now that will execute the add block right here and that will simply do whatever's in the block which says return num1 plus num2 and since the parameters are num1, which is 5, and num2 is 2, it will add those two together and return its value. So we can go ahead and run this, and you can see that the final value is 7. If we were to run this again with some different values, let's say 8 and, I don't know, 9, and if you ran this now, you could see that now we get a value of 17 for 8 plus 9. 
So as you can see, this is how you can vary how your blocks actually work instead of just the stagnant code that we had in the previous tutorial. Now in the next tutorials, or some future tutorial anyway, we'll include how we can actually pass a block of code into a method, which is really where the main power comes from because, of course, we could add two numbers together any time in our program. So this block as it is, is pretty useless in the same, you know, same function that we're just adding the two together. We could have easily just said five plus two right here, and we really don't need this add block. But of course, if we were to pass this block of code off into some other method in some other class altogether, then obviously it can have some real power because you can control what is happening uh, with that method. So anyway, with that, I'll just leave you with uh, what we learned in this tutorial, which is just adding the two parameters. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. And you can also send me a message if you want. You can always subscribe to Twitter and Google+, and those links are on the channel page as well. Anyway, I hope to see you next tutorial.